Hi mamas, welcome to Mental Health Mondays. I am Carrie Biscalonis, founder of Reset Brain and Body, here to talk to you today about what it means to be mentally healthy. Now, most of you might understand what it feels like to have debilitating anxiety, depression, PTSD, or other mental health issues. You know it because it's entirely disruptive of your day, of your mindset, of your ability to go about and do things. Now, a lot of you and many of us struggle with what we call high functioning types of mental health issues, high functioning anxiety, meaning that we are perceived as being a over planner, workaholic, type A, over analyzing, people pleasing, over committing perfectionist. High functioning depression being someone who might feel or look like they are just lazy or antisocial, but um, maybe a little bit more cynical, Debbie Downer type of personality traits, but still able to go about and do your day normally. Sometimes we perceive these as just parts of our personality, not necessarily validating the experience that it is actually living with a type of mental illness or a inability to be at your optimal self. And so one of the first steps to understanding whether you're actually mentally healthy is first validating your own experiences, asking yourself, well, what do I mostly struggle with? Do I struggle with kind of an ongoing undercurrent of anxiety, of anxious thoughts? Do I struggle with an ongoing undercurrent of depression? Do I struggle with something else? Maybe it's disordered eating habits. Um, you know, a lot of times we think that we have to have a full-blown eating disorder that looks like it does in the media to validate that actually many, many people struggle with just, just disordered eating in general or what we call orthoexia, which is this emphasis on doing a lot of healthy things and obsessing over healthy things. Even something like obsessive compulsive disorder can have kind of a low grade function in which we really attach to different thoughts or habits in order to think that we can really um, control the outcome of something. So being able to be honest with yourself, looking at your own experience and then validating, huh, like this actually might mean that I'm having a flare up of something. And so I say that language, a flare up, because it's important to recognize that no one is ever expected to operate at their best self every single day or every moment of the day. I talk to a lot of clients with depression and we say, well, my depression's louder today. And it's a really beautiful baseline to kind of understanding, well, where is that equilibrium landing me? And can I have some days where my depression's louder and some days where my depression is a little bit quieter? And so there doesn't necessarily have to be a standard benchmark of, well, I have X amount of days where I feel happy and hopeful and calm. It's expecting that it's gonna be waves. And so honestly, the best way to understand whether you're mentally healthy or not is your ability to ride the waves. Life will constantly be producing obstacles for you. Whether you are struggling with anxiety, depression, or something else, that can impair your ability to be resilient. And so it's never a matter of never feeling anxious, never having an anxiety attack, or never feeling depressed and having those days when you just don't wanna get out of bed and you feel really hopeless and apathetic. It's about how quickly you can bounce back from them. That is a testament to how mentally healthy you are. So I want that just to sit with you for a moment. It's not a matter of never having those days or those moments where you aren't your best self. It's a matter of how quickly you can bounce back from the harder days and the bigger emotions. You know, we like to tell clients that, you know, an emotion, a feeling is energy, emotion, energy in motion that can last for 90 seconds. Can we ride the wave of 90 seconds? And a lot of times we can't, 
right? And this is where we talk about that resilience. We can't just let the wave last and, and you know go for just those 90 seconds. We instead either bury it because we say, I'll deal with this later. I'm gonna avoid it and I'm just gonna bury it. Or we allowed it to just overtake us because maybe we're just not feeling as resilient in that moment. We don't have as much capacity, just feel it and let it pass through us. And that's when we start to create a mood, right? We start to carry our anxiety. We start to carry our depression. We start to carry our stress more and more when we can't allow the emotion to pass through us. So we have to ask ourselves, what are the things that allow me to be more resilient? How can I allow the obstacles, the failures, the setbacks, the mistakes, the external stimuli go through me? How can I allow myself to feel it and not be overly affected by it and it create more of a mood? So I like to first call in the fundamental five. So this is sleep, movement, fuel, breath, and connection. The fundamental five. We have to do an inventory of where we're at in each one of those things. Am I sleeping at least seven hours a night? Am I moving my body in some way that feels authentic and good for me? Am I fueling my body in a way that optimizes my health both mentally and physically? Am I breathing? Am I giving myself spaces to slow down, calm down, just rest, calming my physiological sense senses and so I'm not in this reactive state all the time? And am I connecting? Am I connecting to myself? Am I connecting to the world? Do I need to create more connections with the outside if I'm inside all day? So the fundamental five. It's a good inventory. Where am I at with these? How am I addressing these needs? That is setting you up then to be more mentally healthy, to be more resilient. And then we have to go into the, well, how do you wanna feel moment to moment? And I call these the necessary eight. So we have collaboration, courageous, creative, curious, calm, clear, confident, and compassionate. Did I already say compassionate? I can't remember now. <laughs> the necessary. Do I need to have a hobby? Do I need to feel like I can um, make it to some sort of workout class every week because that makes me feel really confident in my skin? Do I need to make sure that I'm advocating for myself and speaking up for what I need and therefore I'm feeling courageous? Am I sleeping and resting and having time to read my book so I can feel clear headed and calm? Right? So tapping into these necessary eight as a way to really just understand, okay, these things are the things that will allow me to not only be resilient, but feel like my best self. So the fundamental five, the necessary eight, and then it's just simply asking yourself, okay, how do I support being the best version of myself? And how often do I feel that way? None of this is incredibly tangible. We have to tune into ourselves, validate our experiences, and then understand what is it that will give me the greatest capacity to handle the things that happen throughout my day. That is then how you know if you're mentally healthy. How am I handling that which life throws me? How am I handling my kid's temper tantrum? How am I handling when things don't go my way, when things don't go as planned? And if we feel like we can be really resilient, we can bounce back pretty quickly, come back to a calm, peaceful, happy spot where we're not entirely rattled, where we're not so anxious that we're just stuck in our head, where we're not so sad and apathetic that we just have to you know, go lay in bed the rest of the day, where we're not getting headaches and migraines and IBS symptoms, that's when we know. It's when we're able to handle what life throws us and we can actually feel like we're thriving. I'd love to continue to talk to you about this subject. Please put in any questions that you have, comments you have about your own ways in which you fit in the fundamental five, how you cultivate the necessary eight, or any other things that you do to allow yourself to be more resilient. All right, take care, mamas.